So I have a new 27 inch iMac here in my apartment, which is hilarious because I don't own a desk. So um, welcome to my kitchen, everybody. Um, this week, Apple refreshed the larger iMac and it brings more than the usual CPU upgrades. The exterior design still hasn't changed, but under the hood, the company is touting new processors and graphics, a higher res webcam with improved low light performance and a new audio setup. Most importantly, perhaps, Apple is finally making SSD standard across the line for both the 27-inch iMac and the 21.5-inch version. Anyway, it's precisely because I'm working from home that I decided to shoot this whole video using the iMac's new webcam. I'm doing this partly out of necessity and partly because the webcam is actually one of the more interesting new features here. And what better way for you to judge the difference than for me to do my job with it? Before I go further, this is a good time to say that Apple seems almost gleeful to market the iMac to the work from home crowd. The best example of that is probably the screen. Now, it would be hard to improve on the 27 inch iMac's 5K billion color retina display. And indeed, the changes here are subtle. The first is the addition of Apple's auto color adjusting true tone technology, which is so ubiquitous on the company's smaller devices that I was actually surprised to remember that the biggest iMac didn't yet have it. In any case, if you're sitting next to a window like I am, that auto balancing could come in handy. On a similar note, the 27 inch iMac is now offered with a nano texture glass finish for improved glare reduction, similar to what you'll find on Apple's pricey Pro Display XDR external monitor. That option will cost you an extra $500. For what it's worth, I didn't even notice at first that my review unit had this coating. Then again, if you work with your back to a window, you might appreciate the difference more than I did. Speaking of things you probably assumed the iMac already had, the 27-inch model just got Apple's T2 security chip for the first time. This allows for encrypted storage and Hey Siri commands. The chip also enables some camera improvements, including tone mapping, exposure control, and face detection. Speaking of the camera, the webcam now has 1080p resolution and Apple is touting improved low light performance. I should say, I didn't see the point in testing in nighttime conditions, but I did take a bunch of shots with my shade down, my lights off, or some combination thereof. The shots with the least light are definitely the grainiest, but even then my face at least is well illuminated. As it happens, even when I turned the lights off and I just had some indirect sunlight from the window, that was enough, even for this video that you're watching. When it comes to audio, you're getting the same quote-unquote studio quality mic array found in certain recent MacBook Pros. Here, you've got two mics up front in the chin of the machine with one more mic around back, mostly for noise canceling. Meanwhile, the speaker setup promises higher fidelity and deeper bass, in part thanks to the same T2 chip, incidentally. I'll admit, for the purpose of this video, my producer Kyle and I opted to use an external Blue Yeti mic. You can see it right there. Um, it still beats the Mac's built-in setup. That said, the IMAX 3 mics did a remarkably decent job in my tests, and in particular canceled out a bunch of street noise. You couldn't tell from my recordings that there's a busy street right over there past the machine. As for music, I tried a bunch of different genres, and it all sounded pretty balanced. And I should say the volume is inherently loud enough that I didn't nearly need to pump it up. You know, don't want to annoy the neighbors, after all. That leaves sheer performance. Starting with the CPUs, we've got 10th generation Intel Comet Lake processors. Depending on which off-the-shelf configuration you buy, it'll be a 6 or 8-core CPU, but there's also a 10-core processor available as an upgrade option. In terms of graphics, the vanilla configurations have either an AMD Radeon Pro 5300 card or Radeon Pro 5500 XT, both 7 nanometer GPUs built on AMD's RDNA architecture. From there, you can upgrade to the 5700 or 5700 XT. The 5700 XT will have 16 gigs of GDDR6 VRAM, making this the first time the 27-inch iMac has maxed out with quite that much graphics memory. Again, SSDs are standard here, and again, this should have happened a long time ago. Depending on which configuration you choose, you're starting with 256 gigs or 512. But from there, you can go all the way up to eight terabytes. If that sounds like a lot, it is. Previously, the 27-inch iMac topped out at two terabytes. Interestingly, because of that shift from Fusion drives to SSDs, the overall weight is a little lighter this time around at 19.7 pounds, even though the machine is otherwise identical to its predecessor. Moving on to memory, we're dialing it up to 11, by which I mean you can build your machine with 128 gigabytes. For those keeping score, the previous limit for this machine was 64 gigs. 
This is more memory than the vast majority of users need, and if you do need more, the iMac Pro tops out at 256 gigabytes. Of course, at the entry-level price, you're starting with much less. That would be eight gigabytes. The new configurations are available now. As for the question of whether you should buy one, I might, but I'd have to buy a desk first. That's all I've got for today. For reviews, hands-ons, and other things, remember to like and subscribe to Engadget on YouTube. Thanks a lot. Thank you.